Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Cohen from the Keck USC School of Medicine in Los Angeles. I'm also the chair of the Workforce on Media Relations and Communications for the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. This is a recorded press briefing from research presented at the 57th annual meeting of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. The presentation is entitled Enhancing Recovery in Pediatric and Adult Congenital Cardiac Surgery Effect on Outcomes. It will be presented by Dr. Natalie Waugh from the Boston Children's Hospital in Massachusetts and discussed by Dr. Lauren Kane from the Children's Hospital New Orleans in Louisiana. We're grateful to the Society of Thoracic Surgeons for this opportunity to feature our research. My name is Natalia Hua. I'm a cardiac surgeon and the director of the ERAS program at Boston Children's Hospital. Enhanced Recovery After Surgery are comprehensive perioperative programs associated with improved outcomes and demonstrated cost effectiveness. There's been a sustained interest in cardiothoracic surgery in the recent years, and ERAS guidelines for adult cardiac and thoracic surgeries have been developed and endorsed by the ERAS Society. In 2018, we established an enhanced recovery program for congenital cardiac surgery at Boston Children's Hospital based on evidence from the congenital literature reviewed in a multidisciplinary setting. Program components were defined across the entire perioperative period and institutional protocols were established for each step. And quality improvement metrics were determined after reviewing our baseline data. Our goal was to improve recovery, family satisfaction, and ultimately the value of care we provide. Eligible patients for ERAS are identified before surgery and they receive education. At the time of surgery, a decision to remain in the program is based on intraoperative course. In over 17 months, 559 patients coming for elective surgery at BCH followed the ERAS program. Patients not included during this early experience were neonates, patients referred for complex repairs, and urgent surgery. Adult patients um, with congenital heart disease represented 12% of the program, and 76% of the patients had lower risk surgeries. There are no differences in patient characteristics between implementation and early experience, except a higher rate of prior cardiac surgery as the program progressed. We observe significant improvement in program metrics over time. The implementation period are represented by the pale blue bars and the dark bars represent the following 12 months. pre eras baseline extubation data was added in gray. Major gains include an increased use of opioid sparing strategies, operating room extubation, and early extubation in the ICU. For components with suboptimal compliance, Quality improvement initiatives are developed with stakeholders for lasting programmatic changes. And to enable these QI efforts, we created an interactive dashboard connected to our ERAS database with daily data input from the medical record, interoperative records, and the STS reporting data. And the dashboard allowed visualization of performance metric throughout the entire program and can be filtered for in-depth analysis. A successful ERAS approach includes preventing complications and monitoring for satisfaction. As such, we expanded our surgical visit program done virtually and also uh, developed an electronic patient reported outcome survey. Those are sent at definite time points post discharge with an overall 80% response rate, which are monitored and trigger additional follow up when needed. Our finding over 17 month period that included implementation and early execution of an ERAS program in congenital cardiac surgery showed that in addition to better compliance, we had an increase in operating room early extubation, as well as significantly shorter time on the ventilator in the ICU. Our patients had excellent pain control with opioid sparing protocols, and ICU stay was shortened for patients undergoing low-risk surgeries. We did not yet show a significant difference in duration of hospitalization, except in very select patients undergoing same day transfer after simple intracardiac repairs. Importantly, complications rate remained low and we observed no increase in adverse outcomes over time. This, sud this study showed that opioid sparing strategies and early extubation are key component to enhancing recovery after congenital cardiac surgery. This approach reduces variation in practice and helps optimize resources in the heart center. 
ERAS results from the sum of gains from a comprehensive approach with quality improvement involving stakeholders across the heart center. And it requires ongoing education and patient involvement. Length of stay is often used as a surrogate for recovery, but is not the ideal metric in a pediatric population. And objective measures of stress and recovery are needed to evaluate the program and its components. And we're pursuing research in this area. It is also important to develop value-based metrics that include family satisfaction, results, low complication rates, and costs to fully evaluate the impact of an ERAS approach. We thank the STS for the opportunity. Thank you to the Society of Thoracic Surgeons Program Committee and Dr. Roy for allowing me to discuss this presentation of enhanced recovery in pediatric and adult congenital cardiac surgery effects on outcomes. Dr. Roy and colleagues follow up on their initial experience with enhanced recovery program in congenital cardiac surgery. They report on 574 patients who have undergone congenital heart surgery as part of the ERAS cardiac program over a 17 month period. What they have found is an increase in operating room extubation, reduced mechanical ventilation time in the congenital heart surgical population, as well as a reduction in the perioperative use of opioids. Enhanced recovery after surgery, referred to as ERAS, is a bundled approach to perioperative care based upon the philosophy that patients do better when emotional and physiologic stresses are minimized during surgery. The goal of ERAS is to return patients to normal functional status as quickly as possible. It was initially designed for patients having colorectal surgery in the 1990s and is spread to just about every surgical specialty. Creating a congenital cardiac surgery ERAS protocol requires a shift in culture, which requires ongoing efforts with a multidisciplinary approach, collaboration, provider engagement, and opportunities for process improvement. Williams and colleagues out of Duke University reported their ERAS protocol first year results in adult cardiac surgery and found similar success in the length of stays total ICU days, but did not see benefit of early extubation. Dr. Chatterjee's commentary concluded, Hawthorne effect may be partially responsible, better performance due to observed and count, being observed and counted, and that the key to ERAS was the sustained commitment to process improvement. However, Dr. Roy's results after 17 months of implementation yielded more promising results with two areas in particular that remain important for focus on continued improvement. This is the mobilization within 12 hours after surgery and preoperative carbohydrate treatment. Dr. Roy's group saw only a 20% compliance with the oral carbohydrate loading treatment preoperatively in the component of the ERAS protocol. Nutrition is a critical part of the preoperative management of congenital heart surgery. Koftis and colleagues published a meta-analysis of randomized trials looking at the effect of preoperative carbohydrate loading on clinical and biochemical outcomes after cardiac surgery. A total of nine surgeries were included with a total of 570 patients, seven patients. The results showed oral preoperative carbohydrate treatment in patients undergoing elective cardiac surgery demonstrated a significant 20% reduction in the use of inotropic drugs, nearly 50% reduction in the length of ICU stay, and a 35% decrease in the post-operative insulin requirement in the cardiac ICU without any aspiration events. Due to the heterogeneity of the study, the meta-analysis concluded oral carbohydrate preoperatively is safe, cheap, and likely beneficial. Dr. Larson and colleagues published their study looking at low energy intakes and outcomes after congenital heart surgery. Their protocol provided perennial nutrition for one to four days before surgery and 10 days after open heart surgery, and then separated the groups into low energy intake, which was quantified as less than 63 kilocals per kilogram per day, and a higher energy intake, which was greater than that just stated. They found that the lower energy intake group was associated with a significant increase in duration of artificial ventilation, time to chest closure, time, to, time in the intensive care, and stay in the hospital. 
lower energy intake was also associated with significant increase in length of time that infants required the perennial nutrition and a longer time to achieve full enteral intake and before enteral feeds could be initiated. It seems that it would be worthy to work to increase compliance with the optimization of nutrition in congenital heart patient population. Their study did not include neonates and or highly complex patient population. Therefore, enteral carbohydrate therapy should have been possible in most cases. Dr. Roy and colleagues at Boston Children's Hospital should be congratulated for their continued commitment to process improvement, addressing the soft outcomes that make a difference in our patients' recovery and long-term success. It is imperative that we as congenital heart surgeons and patient advocates must continue to focus on all aspects of care and optimal outcomes. Thank you again for this opportunity.